A very good afternoon to all our viewers and welcome to a new episode of Inside Egypt where we bring you all the latest political, economic and cultural events that are taking place here inside Egypt. To stay tuned, we'll be right back after the short break. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi held a joint press conference with the visiting Djibouti President Omar Ismail Agule at the presidential headquarters in Cairo on Monday. President al-Sisi said the talks covered various fields. He said that deals and memorandums of understanding signed reflect the keenness on mutual cooperation. We have more details with NAL TV's Linda Abdel Latif. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received Djibouti and President Ismail Omar Gile at the Tahadiyya Palace where the welcoming ceremony took place. Following that, both leaders held a joint meeting that was followed by an expanded meeting that was attended by officials from both sides. And afterwards, both presidents witnessed the signature of seven MOUs and agreements. The MOUs include the fields of trade, health and medicine, technical education, exhibitions and international markets membership, the importation and exportation of livestock meat, as well as an MOU between the Suez Canal Authority and the Djibouti Ports and Free Zone Authority. That's besides a technical and economic agreement. And following that, both leaders held a joint press conference. For his part, President Sisi expressed Egypt's appreciation of Djibouti's supporting stances within the African Union Peace and Security Council following the 30th of June revolution, adding that such a support reflects the strong and deep distinguishable historical relations that gather both countries. The president also emphasized on Egypt's keenness on enhancing relations with Djibouti in all fields, especially the economic and trade ones. The president also referred to Egypt's continuous support for Djibouti in the development fields and capabilities building through the Egyptian Agency of Partnership for Development. The president also stressed that the fundamentals of Egypt Egypt's foreign policy is based on non-interference in the affairs of other countries, pointing out that Egypt is keen on intensifying coordination and consultation with Djibouti about the challenges facing the Red Sea and the Horn of Africa area. For his part, Djibouti and President Gile expressed his appreciation for the warm welcome, emphasizing on the historical relations between both countries, hailing Egypt's support for Djibouti since its independence. Gile also welcomed the activation of cooperation between both countries in all fields and the work on supporting the economic relations and enhancing trade exchange, referring to the possibility of making use of Djibouti's location to be a starting base for the Egyptian products to the Horn of Africa and the East Africa region. The Djibouti and President also spoke about the importance of enhancing cooperation between the Suez Canal Authority and the Djibouti Ports and Free Zone Authority to make use of the trade corridor linking Djibouti Port and the Suez Canal through the Red Sea. The discussions between both countries also included regional and international issues of mutual concern. Both leaders discussed conditions in the Horn of Africa area and Yemen, as well as the state of peace and security in Africa and the challenges facing the continent as a result of the increase of crises and the growing risk of terrorism. The discussions also tackled the preparation for the upcoming African Union summit to be held in January of 2017. The Egyptian Djibouti and diplomatic relations have been established since 1977 and Egypt was among the first countries to open an embassy there. And the visit of the Djibouti and President to the country comes to strengthen that relation and increase cooperation between both countries on all levels. Linda Abdel Latif, Nile TV International. Prime Minister Sharif Ismail chaired on Monday a meeting of the Economic Ministerial Committee. The meeting was attended by the Ministers of Planning, Electricity, Transportation, Public Business Sector and the head of the Central Authority of Public Mobilization and Statistics. The meeting tackled a number of economic files related to the economic reform program which is being adopted by the government. The meeting also tackled means of enhancing the government's economic performance through increasing growth rate and production and reducing the budget deficit as well as creating an attractive atmosphere for investments. We have the details. 
Prime Minister Sharif Ismail stressed on Monday that coordination between the government and central bank in terms of monetary and fiscal policies succeeded to provide foreign exchange to provide local market with essential commodities, petroleum products, as well as medicine in suitable prices, and direct them sectors with priority to maintain social stability. In a press statement, the Prime Minister said that coordination between the government and the central bank aims to strengthen financial and monetary stability in order to increase rates of economic development and achieve prices stability in the market. The Prime Minister added that coordination also aims to provide necessary funds for production requirements and raw materials in order to push forward industrial growth. Also Monday, Prime Minister Shif Smail headed the Economic Group Ministerial Meeting. The meeting tackled prices file and the availability of supply goods to citizens, the recent developments in the monetary markets as well as the economic and financial situations. The meeting also discussed maintaining prices of main food commodities and providing all necessary Necessary funds in order to provide protection for low income people. The ministers also discussed proposals to promote the national product as it contributes in reducing the import bill and also to ease the pressure on hard currency. The Prime Minister also followed on efforts to encourage investments and provide the necessary climate for investors. The meeting also focused on the projects that aim to attract investments as well as the development works underway in national projects. The Minister of Finance said in a statement that Egypt is to aim for a 5% economic growth rate in the 2017-18 budget. The statement added the ministry will focus on economic policies and support productive sectors as industrial activity, investment and increasing exports. We have the details. Finance Ministry will aim for an economic growth of 5% in the new financial year. According to details from its outline 2017-2018 budget, the Ministry said that it hopes to reduce the budget deficit to 9.5% of gross domestic product, the GDP and the total public debt to 94%. Egypt's total public debt amounts to 2.6 trillion Egyptian pounds or 94.5% of their GDP, according to the central bank's data. Their budget will also aim for an unemployment rate of 11%, down from the current 12.6%. According to the statement, the targeted growth rate will be achieved through adopting a range of economic policies, including support for productive sectors such as industrial activity investment and increasing exports. Their focus on national mega-projects will likewise continue with growth in mind. In 2014, Egypt embarked on a plan to introduce a number of fiscal reforms, including fuel subsidy cuts as well as imposing new taxes to ease their growing budget deficit. In early November, Egypt's central bank decided to freely liberalize the pound and raise key interest rates as part of a set of reforms aid at alleviating a dollar shortage and establishing the country's economy. Egypt's economic growth rate registered 4.3% of GDP in the fiscal year 2015-2016, down from 4.4% in the previous fiscal year. Egypt's Petroleum Ministry said it has signed eight agreements in 2015 and 16 with six international and local companies to search for oil and gas reserves in the Mediterranean, the Western Desert, the Gulf of Suez and Upper Egypt, with total investments worth 709 million U.S. dollars. We have more details on this report. The Petroleum Ministry said that it signed in 2015-2016 eight agreements with six international and local companies to search for oil and gas reserves in the Mediterranean, the Western Desert, the Gulf of Suez and Upper Egypt with total investments worth $709 million. The ministry said in a statement that the agreements also include drilling 33 new energy wells. The ministry also highlighted that it has succeeded in increasing the natural gas production per day to around 4.45 billion cubic feet of gas by accelerating the search for natural gas reserves in the Mediterranean. In early December, Egypt announced that it accepted investment offers in oil and gas drilling and exploration worth $200 million from companies. According to a statement, the consumption of petroleum and gas products at international prices during 2015-2016 fiscal year registered 
279 billion Egyptian pounds, while the cost of providing the fuel to consumers reached 181 billion Egyptian pounds. The revenue of the subsidized products in the local market amounted to 130 billion Egyptian pounds, while the subsidies of the petroleum and gas products cost 51 billion Egyptian pounds. In early November following the liberalization of the Egyptian pound, the Petroleum Ministry announced further cuts to fuel subsidies. The move came as part of the government's plan to slash its total subsidy bill in the new budget by 14% to reach 130.1 billion Egyptian pounds in the 2016-2017 fiscal year. With the aim of encouraging university students to be more creative, a fashion show was held in which a number of students took part and presented outfits they designed themselves. Now TV's Basmataha has more in this report. To encourage students to be creative, a fashion show was held in which a number of Egyptian and African students at Faculty of Mass Communication took part. They showed a number of clothes that they designed themselves. They said they are really excited because of such a lovely experience. Well, this is a class I'm teaching about fashion show. It's interior design and fashion show. My part is the fashion show. I wanted the students to do something creative, meaning that whatever you're going to see today uh, will be their own. Ma they made it themselves. They got the material. They just show me the idea before they go ahead so that things will not be ready made and people will not believe it. I have an African student, the rest are Egyptians. Everybody th thought about something. We have t-shirts, uh, we have uh, shawls, uh, shoes, ice caps, a uh, variety of things I'd like you that you would see. We have about 16 models here in the class. Uh, some of them worked with them and then the other is going to show you know, the, the work itself. And I hope the people watching, they will, uh, they will love it as I did. Some of the students said that they faced some obstacles while preparing for the show, but they were able to overcome them. Yeah, the difficulties is that for the design, during the design I faced some difficulties because it's very difficult to get the design and it's handmade. I have to use my hand to sew it, so it's kind of difficult. But alhamdulillah, I got to the dest destination that I want, that I desire, and I'm so happy about it. I'm presenting this t-shirt, it's handmade. Uh, I used uh, colors uh, to draw on that this t-shirt uh, with brushes and some other materials like this material stress. Uh, what else? That's it. Holding such events will indeed encourage students to express themselves and show their talents. Fashion shows are held in order to show the attendees the recent fashion trends. This fashion show reflects the great artistic talent and creativity of the students, wishing such events would be held on a regular basis. Basma Taha, Nile TV International. Ladies and gentlemen, we now take a look at the Tourism Magazine, which brings us all the latest uh, exciting and attractive destinations here in Egypt to be visited by all our tourists. Sabir Mitwali has more. During his visit to Egypt to hold his first ever concert, American singer-songwriter Michael Bolton paid a visit to Giza Plateau as part of his tour around Cairo's many cultural and historical sites. 
next to the Great Pyramids of Khufu, Bolton called on the world to come and visit Egypt, which he described as the land of peace, safety and civilization. Ashraf Mohi, Director General of Giza Plateau, who escorted Bolton on his tour, said that the new singer was very curious about the ancient Egyptian civilization and the efficiency of ancient workers and architects who built such a great monument. Bolton also visited the Sphinx and took a camel ride. Egypt's Antiquities Ministry signed a soft loan agreement with the Japan International Cooperation Agency on Monday in an attempt to continue the construction work of the Grand Egyptian Museum or the GEM. The agreement was signed in an attempt for the museum to be opened up on time after continued delays. The ceremony was led by Antiquities Minister Khaled Al Anani, Minister of International Cooperation Sahar Nas, Japan's Ambassador to Egypt Takin Ru. Kagwa and JJICA chief representatives to the Egypt office Tiruku Itu. Tariq Taufik, the GEM supervisor general, said that the loan is about $460 million that the Egyptian government would return with within 25 years at an interest rate of 1.4% after a seven year grass period. And finally, the Association of Upper Egypt for Education and Development has a program in cooperation with the European Union that offers educational opportunities for everyone whilst promoting individuals' freedom, creativity and human dignity. Now to be Zabiri Gendi was at the Association's Festival for Creativity and Art and, followed, and filed in the following report. The European Union is cooperating with the Association of Upper Egypt for Education and Development to fund an arts program for youth. The association is a non-governmental organization that aims at enlightening the minds of children and youth as well as enhancing their skills. The EU selected Upper Egypt for their funded program going on for the last two years so as to support the access and participation of 13 disadvantaged communities as a means of cultural and arts expression. I think it's a very peaceful mean of expressing what you have on your mind, of expressing who you are, what you believe in. And it's great to have this expression put in one form or another, whether it's dance, whether it's art, as we see here on, on written art, um, so that people can actually see who you are and what you think, and then you can open up a dialogue on this particular point. The association goes back to 75 years of civil work and education. The main aim of the, its work is to maintain sustainability in its activities for youth. The activities include education, 
utilized as a means of expanding people's choices and build a comprehensive vision. How to encourage, uh, encourage them uh, to, um, to uh, ex ex exit uh, uh, their talents, uh, all talents, how uh, they can solve uh, their problems in their communities through artists, uh, through drawing, through uh, theatre, through pantomime, uh, they thinking all the time, uh, what we have from problem, how we can solve this problem. Uh, how we can do this together, how we can live together. This is the main point in our cultural program and association. Within the framework of continuous improvement of a learning environment for youth, they are performing activities that enhance their skills and encourage others as well as children to enhance their artistic talents. كان هدفنا كله نحن ازاي نقدر نغير في المجتمع بتاعنا في الفئات المستهدفة المحتاجة ده بجد اللي هي المدارس تغنى مع المدارس. Our aim is to change our community through artistic activities in schools and orphanages. The idea is to encourage arts through linking between games and art. In the end, the association is to encourage innovation and creativity to keep up quality through varying methods of expression and encouragement of critical thinking. The Creativity and Arts Festival asserts the fact that youths are combating terrorism through their expression of various arts. This is Abir Gindi, Nile TV International, Cairo. Of today's edition of Inside Egypt, where we brought you all the latest political, economic, and cultural activities taking place here inside Egypt. My name is Angie Meher. Many thanks for watching.